Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Basement. Appreciate you coming down, checking out another episode. Today we're going to take a look or, you know, do some comparisons and a little review of VR2 versus the first VR iteration, the controllers, the connections, the overall experience that I've had so far. Um, just kind of wanted to relay some of that information over to you all and uh, just discuss see what everybody else thinks so let's not waste any time let's get right into it so first things first um, we're gonna start off with the connections I'm gonna have to go walk over to where the systems are and shoot some other footage so we'll cut right over to that so let's get started um, you know, the connections of the PSVR 2 are just way, way, way more simplified than PSVR 1. So PSVR 1 had a whole bunch of stuff. And we'll cut over and look at that right now. Here we are over at the first VR. As you can see, still one cable, but instead of like being a sleek plug-in for the headphones you've got this little unit that you kind of have to worry about that your headphones are plugged directly into and then you have this box which this feeds directly to your headset it's got these two cables that run back here and then you have a power cable and HDMI cables from your PS Four running back to your TV and then uh, another USB cable as well so I mean as you can see there's a lot more there and not to mention the the camera is external so you gotta account account for that too all right so you've seen now how many how there's an HDMI cord there's you know a separate little dongle thing I have the first gen PSVR I got it at launch so it's a good comparison launch versus launch but um you can see how many cables it had it had an extra HDMI port that was powered you know it's got like all these cords running off of it it's just very it looks a little daunting because there's a lot going on there and you know there's a lot of wires to trip over it's kind of a mess as you can see from my setup up there um, but you know I think it was still a pretty groundbreaking piece of tech technology I'm not gonna lie I didn't play it that much past launch it did give me motion sickness initially I played like rigs and like all the jumping up in the air and flying around and stuff gave me motion sickness and then I played like uh, one of the space games that kind of wasn't as bad but still all the like spinning and stuff gave me motion sickness and then one that really surprised me that kind of gave me motion sickness with the old one was uh, Gran Turismo Sport like the driving the motion was just a little choppy and I don't know if I went if I went back now it would still feel that way maybe it was just how my eyes were at the time I do have like issues with my eyes so I <laughs> can't count that out but um anyways kind of got off topic there um as you but <laughs> getting back on to the connections the connections for PSVR 2 let me cut on over to that right now all right so here we are at the ps5 and as you can see it's just one cable coming out of this thing right there and it plugs into your ps5 right here it's plenty long I mean, as you can see and uh yeah as far it's 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 extremely streamlined from what it was before this is just a charging port so 
I mean, it's it's quite quite an improvement. And another thing I wanted to show off while I'm here is the cameras. So you can see there's four cameras on the front of the unit. Unit. So yeah, it's uh it's really nice stuff. As you can see, it's just one cable. Um, and it's nice and long and it's H USB-C so it's not like bulky it's not like weighing anything down um, it's very convenient I mean I was so surprised when I hooked it up for the first time and there's just one cable I should have commented on that during the unboxing but I think I got just excited anyways um, yeah it's just totally streamlined way simpler beware though if you have like a dongle thing that plugs into the front to give you more USB ports you have to plug directly into that USB-C can't be like bridged through anything because it goes directly to the GPU which is also really cool I mean um, it's anyways let's just try to stay as much on topic as I can so getting into the next thing that I kind of wanted to talk about I wanted to compare like the controllers and you know get into the overall experience of things um as you can see i have here the playstation move controllers these were originally developed for ps3 um with the move camera which was used on psvr1 psvr2 has cameras built into the headset there's four little you know cameras on there for like depth perception and all the stuff you see during the setup um with psvr1 you had to set up an external camera and it was like looking at you and with that camera you would use you know depending on the game you might have had two of these or you know you'd have to use this or possibly just the dual shock controller but um, as you can see, this is definitely like a lot less sleek than this. Um, and that was kind of one of the things that I didn't initially really love about PSVR 1 was like the fact that you had to use these older controllers from PS3 and the PS3 like move. It was kind of like more of a step than I initially would have thought that it was. I mean, it was it's not bad or anything. I still enjoyed playing some games with these, but I don't like this as much as this. This thing is way cooler, way more ergonomic. Um, just, you know, does combines both of these functions into one, except for like minus two buttons. But, I mean, it's it's just really, you can tell they, they, Sony really put a lot of thought into this. And it, um, it really shows. I think that it's uh, just the ergonomics and the feel of the controllers, you know. It's night and day. I mean, it's really, really incredible. I mean, this looks so futuristic compared to this. And, I mean, it operates so much better too the functionality is just is there is is and it's great so i mean that was one thing i really i think is a really like great change great upgrade that i i love about the new vr system um and then let's kind of get into my overall review um, I'm really impressed initially by the amount of launch titles. I know some of them are like older games that were kind of adapted from like Oculus and all these other VR technologies that have kind of been around and are more, I guess, uh, were more suited at the time. Um, so it's interesting, but I mean, there's like 40 plus games none of them were being released physically so there's that which it is what it is it's not a huge deal i'm gonna have to upgrade the size of my hard drive eventually but i haven't had to do that yet um the games that i've had the most experience playing are uh 
on the new system, I'm kind of segueing into my game experience, are Gran Turismo, Zenith, and Fantavision. I've played those three at least, like, Gran Turismo I played a bunch. The other two I played, like, two or three hours each. Um, and I can say that it's... It's, it's very unique. With those three games, you're getting a very, like, wide kind of view of what's possible. Fantavision's kind of, like, arcade-esque experience. Very unique experience. Zenith is, like, your MMO, so you're swinging your sword and walking around and stuff, which I have a funny story about that. If I have time, I'll get into it later. Um, and, uh... Gran Turismo is obviously driving. So uh, just a comparison, kind of what I started getting into a minute ago, or in the beginning of the video, rather. Gran Turismo Sport versus the Gran Turismo 7 in VR. Uh, they, they're similar in that, like, you know, you're only getting the driving in VR for both games. But I think that, like, the technology of the lenses, the lenses on PSVR 2 are a lot clearer because they're higher definition, um, newer technology, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, it just really, really, like, smooths everything out. I've, I'm, I've noticed just that I'm not getting much motion sickness, if at all. Um, a little bit in Zenith when you're walking around because it's kind of, um, it's a little odd moving without actually moving, but you get used to it. It's not too bad. It's not like, um, but I haven't played like anything, well, I guess Gran Turismo is a little crazy, but I haven't played anything like a space like a, a game where you're flying through space where you can just like barrel roll a bunch like which I had on I had something like that on PSVR 1 and the name of the game is slipping my mind right now but um I have found that there's a I've I'm noticing a lot less motion sickness um and I'm sure that has to do with the smoothness so overall I really really like it I think that um I think it's it's a good deal for the price point if you're looking at like other headsets and you already have a PS5 maybe this is you're trying to get into VR I think that like this is the perfect way to you know get into it or if you had PSVR and you were iffy because you kind of got motion sickness or something like that I think that this VR the VR2 is a is a big improvement and really, um, it's really nice. <laughs> it's, it, it really is nice. It's, and I'm excited to, you know, check out some of the newer titles. Oh, I forgot to mention, I checked out, like, there's a Star Wars game on there that I played for, like, 30 minutes. Uh, which is cool, but it felt a little bit clunky. I couldn't, it's like, you know, you, it's like, it seems more like a, like a, Arkham type experience where you're playing just through like a story. I don't know how long it is. So it was like a smuggler type thing. So I'll have to keep playing that if I can pull myself away from Gran Turismo. But um, but yeah, getting back to just the comparison, I think that I'm gonna be honest. Now that I put a lot more time into VR two, it kind of makes me want to go back to VR one and kind of re-experience -exper some of those games. I did check out, like, Moss on there because I was thinking about getting Moss on VR 2, Moss and Moss 2. And, like, I was playing it on the VR 1, and I was surprised at how good everything looked with the VR 1. Now, granted, with VR 2, um, for people that have, like, you know... If you're nearsighted or you're farsighted, you can actually move the the length, like the focal length of the lenses. I wish you could do it for both, because my eyes are like different. But uh, whatever, it's 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 a good feature. It really allows you to kind of just one more aspect of fine tuning that they didn't have on the first gen of the headset. 
So, overall, I recommend it. It is expensive, but I think that if you want to get into VR, it is going to be a little bit expensive. So, and I think this is a good price point for the technology that you're getting. You're really, it's, 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 it's some really cool stuff. So, anybody who has it, I wonder what, what you think of the VR. What's your review? I mean, it's been out for about a month now. So, I think most of us have had, that got it at launch, have had enough time with it to kind of give an honest opinion. So, I mean, mine, I just, I like it. I think it's good. I think that if you want to get into VR, I think it's a great option. Um, there's a lot of games for you to check out. Um, the features are incredible. I mean, just the story that I was talking about. I was playing Zenith and I was walking around my room because you can set a play field. And I set it a little bit too big. I set it at the edges of my room and my PlayStation sitting on a cabinet uh, as you saw when I was demonstrating the the layout of the cables um, and I'm swinging my arm and I feel it bang like that and I take the headset off and I see my PlayStation's right there so I just decided I'm gonna stand in the middle of the room and not walk anymore during this game and turn around and but I can so I could still do all that good stuff but anyways <laughs> yeah just be careful. I never thought I'd actually almost destroy something with a video game, but yeah, it, it could happen. So uh, be careful about that, but I guess that's always in all VR. But overall, very solid experience. Works really well, really easy to use. I'm really loving it with the Pulse 3D headset. And um, yeah, recommend it to anyone who has a PS5 or is looking to get into VR. I mean, even if you're going to do a VR setup on your computer, you're spending way more than that. So, yeah, highly recommended. Hope you all enjoyed this quick little review. And uh, stay tuned for more videos. I'll be putting some more stuff out soon. All right, thanks again for coming down to Brian's basement. We'll see you next time.